welcome to our review on changing state. So what we need to understand now is what's actually happening within the structure when chemicals change state. So if we consider when a substance changes from a solid to a liquid, then some bonds are actually breaking. But when we're changing our substance from a liquid to a gas, that means that all of the remaining bonds have to break. What we find in terms of how this impacts the properties of our actual substances, we need to know about the bonds that are present. Because the stronger the bond and the more of them there are, then the greater the energy will need to be transferred from the surroundings to our substance in order to break them. So if you've got a lot of very strong bonds present, you need a large amount of energy to be transferred from the surroundings to break those bonds. Therefore, that means it will take a greater amount of energy, so has a higher melting point and boiling point. If we consider a substance that's got a high melting point, then that tells us it's got many strong bonds in the solid state. If we have a substance with a high boiling point, then that relates to it having many strong bonds in the liquid state. If we consider what happens when we do the inverse now, so when we're actually making a substance condense or freeze, then what we're seeing here is bonds are forming. So when we go from a gas to a liquid, some bonds will form. But when we then go from a liquid to a solid, many bonds are going to form. So just to give you a bit of a recap on those bonds that we've encountered in our C2 topic, if we've got a metal, then that will have metallic bonds present, and those are strong bonds. If we've got an ionic compound, then it's an ionic bond, and these will again be a strong bond. So that's, remember, between a metal and a non-metal. If we've got a giant covalent structure, then, as the name suggests, it's a covalent bond. Covalent bonds are very strong, and these will be forming between non-metals only. And finally, our simple molecules, these only have intermolecular forces between them, and those intermolecular forces are weak, and therefore, these are the ones that have the lower melting points and boiling points. One other change in state we do need to make ourselves aware of is sublimation. Now, if we talk about sublimation, we're talking about the direct change from solid to gas. And this is something that you could see happening with iodine. So iodine is made up of these simple molecules that are attracted by weak intermolecular forces. So in the solid state, they're these shiny black crystals. But at room temperature, there's actually enough energy to make them separate to become a purple vapor. So they're going straight from their solid state of black crystals to their gas state, the purple vapor. If we were to cool those back down, then what we'd find is that the opposite of sublimation is deposition. Hopefully at the end of this video review, you do know about our different changes in state and what's actually happening in terms of bonding for those changes to occur. You should also remember those key bonding types, whether they're strong or weak and where they're occurring. And finally, make sure you do know this last change in state of sublimation and deposition.